When Daniel Craig announced that No Time to Die would be his last James Bond movie, speculation exploded as to who would be the next 007. Many names were feverishly proposed, including Idris Elba. Personally, I don't think James Bond should be black. He's James Bond, not Doctor Who. He doesn't regenerate. On the other hand, I'm a huge Idris Elba fan, especially Luther, so I could see the point. So anyone who wanted to see a black James Bond had their prayers answered when Christopher Nolan, one of my favourite directors, released his spy-fi epic Tenet. Tenet stars the protagonist, he has no name in the movie, an ex-military highly trained assassin and spy trying to stop a Russian megalomaniac from destroying the world while travelling around exotic locations in fabulous suits. Sound familiar? But we're not here to critique the movie, we're here to be inspired by the fabulous wardrobe created by Jeffrey Kurland, who has worked with Christopher Nolan on his previous movies. So let's dive straight in as we take a look at the two leads, the protagonist and Neil. We'll take a look at their formal wear and their casual wear, from cold climates like London to hot climates like India. The protagonist arrives in India. This scene very much reminds me of the old thrillers Men in Ivory Suits in Tropical Locations. It's a classic nod to the expat and pulled off so stylishly. He's wearing a pink tinted cream or beige linen and silk blended suit. As with many of his suits in this movie, Curland has found complex textured fabrics which give his characters a richness which they will need to pull off their mission. Linen is a traditional fabric for hot climates as it is extremely breathable and silk, usually between 15 to 20 percent, helps the fabric drape better, gives it a nice sheen and is cool to the touch. He has paired it beautifully with the cream knit polo to pull off a comfortable look for this location. Knit polos are a great short sleeve shirt for hot weather but they tend to cling so a very fit body and a Bruce Lee level of body fat is required to pull them off successfully. And here we are also introduced to Neil, his very laid back associate. Neil is wearing an ivory linen suit with a shirt and tie. We can immediately see the synchronicity and contrast between the two characters. Neil is foppish in his dress style. He is carefree, almost indifferent. His suit is not well looked after. His shirt is crumpled and his cuffs undone. His green striped tie is loosened, his face unshaven and his hair tousled. I am full of admiration for the way he pulls off wearing a suit with such nonchalance. He has gone native. Next we see the protagonist entering an opulent restaurant in London to meet Sir Michael Crosby, played by Michael Caine. This is my favourite scene in the movie, but more on that later. He is wearing a sharp grey two-piece suit with a pink overcheck, a white shirt and a striped necktie. In this scene, Sir Crosby delivers the wonderful line, Brooks Brothers won't cut it. As the protagonist will be impersonating a billionaire. However, despite the sartorial slight, the suit is actually very fine and well-fitting. In fact, all of the suits in the movie are originals created by Curland from some of the finest fabrics. It was important to Curland as the suits would have to be hard-wearing but still look good after a back-and-forth scuffle. He did choose an off-the-rack necktie to downgrade the look slightly. So consequently, in the next scene, we see Washington as he enters Shipley's to introduce himself to Cat in a super-fine silver sharkskin three-piece suit, a white shirt, and a presidential full pocket square and a deep purple necktie. If you've been watching my videos and you think you've heard shark skin fabric before, then you are right and it's no coincidence. Although the costume designer didn't reference James Bond in particular when designing the clothes, he did have Sean Connery in mind, the way he wore his suits, the way he moved with confidence in them. It was back to that line of advice to Connery from the director of Dr. No, Terence Stamp, who told him to sleep in his suits. Before he enters Shipley's, he is briefly seen in the car wearing a beautiful cashmere black peak lapel overcoat, his only outwear in the whole movie. Outside Max's school, the protagonist is wearing another beautifully complex fabric, a grey check sports coat with patch pockets for casual appearance. He is wearing light grey pants and the same knit polo from the scene in India. It is a brief scene and it's a nice introduction to his smart casual look, the polo taking the formal edges off his sports coat. In a walk and talk scene featuring both heroes, we can see a more casual attire. The protagonist is wearing a heavy dark grey jacket with a burgundy polo, grey trousers and what looks like suede chelsea's. Neil on the other hand is wearing a far more interesting casual suit made from a light grid pattern fabric with a very unique shawl collar. Again the loose fit and relaxed drape of the fabric expresses Neil's laissez-faire manner. His soft white shirt is covered up by a green linen silk soft scarf and suede spectator shoes. He makes the shawl collar and spectator shoes look light and breezy. Neil makes a spectacular entrance in the Freeport scene as a wealthy businessman. There are so many colours woven into the intricate texture of the suit fabric it's almost impossible to designate a single colour to it. At a distance I would guess it appears a dark grey but never monotone. It reeks of exclusivity and money which is of course its intention. If you want to look the part, dress the part. 
He has on a white shirt and a burgundy tie and pocket square. The matching necktie and pocket square is one of the weaknesses of his output, but he wears it well. In the airport scene, both men continue to wear casual clothes. Neil has simply changed his shirt for a faded blue and brown striped one. The protagonist has switched to a dark blue sports coat and a navy polo and is noticeably carrying a garment bag for his suits. He's bringing his impressive wardrobe with him, a very good idea to bring your valuables on board. As both men arrive at the Freeport, they are again dressed for serious business, the business of billionaires. The protagonist has donned a broken three-piece suit, also known as Spizzato, a very fine navy pinstripe jacket and trousers, and a plain dove grey vest. They are very well matched. He has a double pinstripe shirt and a grey necktie. Neil once again is dressing very close to the protagonist's wardrobe with a patterned double-breasted grey pinstripe two-piece suit, a black and silver striped necktie on a striped Winchester shirt and a silver pocket square. I can't not mention the spectacular action sequence with the 747. If you're wondering why it looks so real, that's because it is. They actually purchased a 747 and crashed it into the building. The protagonist is back in India meeting up with Priya. This time he has on a grey wool sports coat over a black polo and light grey pants. The jacket drapes a bit like cashmere, but it might be a high twist open weave wool jacket, as it's obviously still too hot judging by the others on the street. The Mediterranean clifftop scene sees the protagonist in some very casual but stylish wear. A pair of khaki chinos, a brown belt and a light grey polo. He certainly loves those polos and wears them well. When the sun goes down and the protagonist wants to look a little more suave, he dons a deep purple two-piece suit with perfectly matching knit polo buttoned all the way up. This monochrome, monotone look looks extremely sophisticated when done well and worn with confidence. Of course, it helps to be a spy and you may not want to wear it to work in the bank. Hey, easy, Phil. Where I'm from, you buy me dinner first. In this quayside scene, we see Washington wear his brightest outfit yet, a blue and yellow striped untucked pajama collar shirt with ecru linen pants. It says very at ease, ironic considering the reality of his situation, but it's still stylish. This is an excellent example of dress down but smart. Of course, it helps if you have a wardrobe department standing just off camera to freshly iron it for you. Back on Sator's yacht, he retains his pants, but changes into a more serious black knit polo for some nighttime spying. I feel the knit polo is to the protagonist as the navy grenadine necktie is to Connery's Bond, his go-to signature garment. In another walk and talk scene, this time in Tallinn and Eastern Europe, both men are dressed down for some surreptitious scheming. The protagonist is wearing a casual classic, a bomber jacket, purple. Underneath he has a mustard knit polo. He really has some collection of polos, I'd love to know where he gets them, and dark beige pants. Neil is aiming a little higher on the style table, wearing a dark green sports coat with flat breast pocket and subtle window pane pattern. Grey pants, a dark green shirt, and a green and black pattern necktie worn casually. Although the knot is tied perfectly tight at the collar, it is splayed, showing his airy attitude even with sharp clothing. And much like a Bond script, here's where we leave our spies for some time. The action starts, but there's nothing of sartorial note, though there are some quite extraordinary action sequences. This is the protagonist and Priya's penultimate meeting. He's wearing light grey pants, a dark grey sports coat and a warm grey knit polo. I say penultimate meeting with some significance, as when we see them together again in the finale, he appears in the back of her car to assassinate her. He has on a light grey Glencheck suit and a dark blue knit polo. Very nonchalant if you want to carry out a quiet assassination on the side streets of a posh London neighbourhood. I said I would come back to this meeting and explain why it is my favourite scene of the movie. I have long been a fan of Michael Caine, as is Christopher Nolan, judging by how many of his movies he has starred in. He is one of those old school stars known for dressing well, both on and off screen. In this scene he is in the lavish restaurant, the level of which you would expect a lord to dine in, to meet up with the protagonist. But from John David Washington's demeanour, I get the impression he is full of admiration for the actor himself, especially the way he says goodbye. Or maybe he is smiling just because he's been handed a black credit card to buy as many suits as he wants. Both men are extremely well dressed here despite the Brooks Brothers comment. Kane is wearing a dark navy suit with a white shirt, classic yellow ancient matter necktie and a white pocket square in a two-point fold. This scene for me is an homage to Michael Caine and his status as an actor and a well-dressed gentleman and I imagine Nolan wrote it with Caine in mind. Sator is the most casual of dressers in this movie. He is generally wearing loose fitting linen shirts with pants and the occasional sports coat, the style of which is a little different from the western jackets of the protagonist and points to his Russian origins. 
His status as super rich means he really doesn't need to try. His yacht is his expensive suit. Faye, played by Michael Donovan, has a small role in this movie, though you probably recognise his face as he has starred in well over 100 movies and TV shows. His suit is strictly business, a dark grey suit, white shirt and striped tie. Nothing extraordinary or stand out. He could blend in in any company boardroom or office, which his role in the organisation most likely requires. Klaus is dressed to impress as his job requires him to rub shoulders with the super rich. In the first meeting with Neil, he wears a fine grey wool suit, a white shirt, a silver necktie, a red carnation boutonniere. Later he is seen with a gold coloured tie, but seemingly the same suit and shirt. Simple and unremarkable, but superb quality for those who would notice. Finally, I'd like to finish with a brief note about Kat, as she's a key character, but with the caveat that I know almost nothing about women's style and clothing. However, I do know good fabric when I see one, and she has a fabulous collection of dresses and suits inspired by the classic Coco Chanel look. They are very tight-fitting with long skirts and dresses to emphasise her stature. This shows her strength of character, despite her position as a virtual slave to Sator. And thanks for watching my first non-Bond sartorial review. This movie is actually the catalyst for this channel. Please like and subscribe, and I'll be able to keep more of these coming in the future.